Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. As you jump on, please say hi. Let me know you can hear me and see me okay. Um, I'm just going to take a second and um, share this on my other page and set it to public because I know I know I know the drill now. <laughs> I know how it works. So just give me a second while I make this public. Awesome. Welcome, guys. Uh, I um, okay. Alrighty. Hello, hello. Can everybody hear me okay? <clears throat> Alrighty, I think we're good. Okay. Hallelujah. I was just texting my husband because for some reason I can't share it to my other page. So uh, <laughs> I apologize for the silence. Anyway, good morning, everyone. So good to see everyone. Hello. Oh, from Melbourne and the US. It's so good to have everybody on. I was thinking this morning as I was getting ready for this, it has been a long time. It's been a long time since uh, I've been on Facebook Live for anything like this. I think Kevin and I jumped on a few weeks ago to talk about the Ablaze Australia School that is coming up uh, in January. And, uh, and then I was like, wow, it's been ages since we've done a Facebook Live. So I'm so excited to be back with everybody. Yay, so good to see everyone. Well, Matt and Nat, two of my favorite people on the planet. Thank you for jumping on with me this morning. This is gonna be fun. Thanks for yeah, having we're... us again. Yeah, we're looking forward to it too, Lana. It's gonna be really good. Oh, Nat, you're getting lots of comments about your beautiful hair. Yeah. <laughs> 20, so 20, 2020's been a tough year. I'm going white. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, oh so, my so thing's good. falling out. I can't keep it in. No, <laughs> oh, guys, if you're seeing that like this during the uh, during our live, it's because she's trying to keep her, her earphones in her ears. <laughs> I'm not blocking anyone out. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to dive straight in this morning. I want to um, just share with you for a minute why we're even doing this. As I was um, just cooking the other day and cutting uh, up vegetables, I was literally chopping carrots and the Holy Spirit um, really began to stir on my heart that there is a, um, a need for hope to be, re to be continually released right now. And, uh, and as I was pondering with the Holy Spirit, um, I just felt like I needed to have a conversation with Matt and with Nat around what they were feeling, the Lord was saying. And, um, and that's how this Facebook Live has come about this morning. Um, but I heard the Lord say, Lana, I want you to invite my people to a table of hope. And, you know, when I think of tables, I think of places of relationship, but I also think of places where I feast, <laughs> where I eat. Mm -hmm. And right now in the world, it can be very easy to sit at tables and feast on things that the Holy Spirit isn't saying. You know, if we're feasting at a table of, you know, the television and what the media is telling us, you know, I feel like the Lord is being really um, intentional right now to call us to that table of intimacy, to call us to that table of hope, um, to really feast on what the Lord is saying. And so this morning, I feel like um, through what we're going to share with you, I feel like the Lord is not only going to release hope to you, but I feel like there is really a refreshment that is going to happen this morning. Um, I've been feeling for many months now the weariness um, in the body of Christ, the, the weariness of, of many people that have just been in a battle and the weariness of just dealing with the atmosphere, right, that, that's, you know, that's going on in the earth right now. And so I want to position, I encourage you to position your heart this morning uh, before the Lord because I, and be expectant, because I, I really feel like the Holy Spirit is going to minister some really deep encouragement and refreshment to you guys. Hallelujah. All right, well, let's dive in. Hey, Matt, how about we start with you? Do you want to yep. just um, dive in and just start? We'll have a conversation, the three of us, but what, what's the Lord been stirring on your heart recently? Like what, what's bubbling? Yeah, I, and I love this conversation, Lana. I love that you speak from this language and I love the whole analogy of the table. I mm. think that uh, it's such a, a biblical uh, concept for us to draw up a, a seat at the table and to be in relationship with those that are around us. And again, it's in those places of relationship that hope actually is born. Hope mm. thrives. 
And even when all that's going on in the world right now, uh, I know that lots of people are hurting and lots of people are suffering. And, mm. But I believe this is the season for the body of Christ to rise up and speak out these eternal qualities of the kingdom of God. The faith, hope and love statement of 1 Corinthians 13 booms inside of my spirit for such mm. a time as this. Uh, every, I'm sure all three of us know at times where we've even used the word hopeless in our own lives, uh, in a situation, it looks like it's hopeless, a situation looks like we can't see a solution and we don't understand it. And so we all know what it's like to engage with that word. But I don't think hopeless is actually a kingdom word mm. because there is always hope. <laughs> if hope is an eternal quality, mm. It'll always be able to be found. What I've found in seasons where I have felt hopeless, I have been isolated and I've been alone and often I've taken myself into those places because I think nobody understands what I'm going through. Nobody's been where I've been before and all those sorts of things that we sort of seem to engage. We know they're not true, but we seem to engage with them at that kind of level and we give uh, like space in our minds to this language of hopelessness. But the father's like, yeah. what is that word? Because hope is yeah. an eternal quality. There's always hope. It's never hopeless and, or lost. And I think Satan, and this is part of what I think that is happening in the body of Christ right now, is Satan is w waging war for our love, for our hope, mm. and for our faith. <laughs> if we can be loveless, hopeless, and faithless, particularly as believers in Christ, man, that's the best advertisement for Satan that we can possibly imagine. Um, mm. But we're not designed that way. That is not our design. Our design is for love, hope, and faith. And those three qualities are so powerful, they will change atmospheres wherever we are. And see, mm. part of the season we're in, that when a brother or sister is feeling hopeless, I believe that the Father has placed us in their lives to be hopeful and allowing our hope to breed, because I think hope breeds hope. Uh, and when hope is breeding, we're actually starting to see it become um, something that's infectious, if I can even use that word in this day and age. I know that can be considered the wrong word to use. I don't know. But this concept <laughs> is that this is our design. This is who, who we are. And we've got to actually come from that place of our design, not often our place of circumstance as well. Yeah. And I think as believers in Christ, it's like, uh, uh, like Moses all the way back in the Old Testament. When his strength wavered, he needed two other people with strength beside him and he leant on their strength. And so when we're feeling hopeless, we've got to lean on the, on the hope of the people that the Father's placed around us. And we will find that in allowing uh, our hopeless situation or our supposed hopeless situation, when hope infects it, hope drives away hopelessness. And I just think this season for right now, this is part of the conversations going on inside of my spirit that love breeds love. Hope breeds hope and faith breeds hope. So I think this season right now, even with everything that's going on, we're in a situation where we carry something so powerful and so fundamentally a part of our design that this is the moment for us to step out in these places of hope. Yeah, and I, I love that. You know, I was um, I was thinking the other day, I had this dream uh, in the last week and the Lord was speaking quite a few things. But at the end of the dream, he said, Lana, there's been a lot of teaching in the body of Christ over the, over the years uh, regarding identity. He said, but my people are about to truly understand their identity. And when he spoke that, and I woke up, it was this incredible sense of two things. One, it was it was our authority, but the other was our original design and how you and I are created to live in a place that is not um, founded on our circumstances, but we're living in a place where hope and faith and love is a constant reality because of who we're in a relationship with. And so I just, I, I love what you're, you're saying because I think right now, you know, there are a lot of people that, you know, I've been watching comments, people um, that are really, um, you know, needing that hope and, and needing that. And I know at times in my own life, I have used the word hopeless and I have, you know, I've attributed that to myself where that's, that's not part of who I am, right? If I'm living in this place of beautiful relationship with him, and, you know, every day I'm living by the word that flows out of his mouth, then I'm living constantly in a place of hope. So I think that that's really good. Have we frozen Matt? Matt, are you I, I can around? hear you, but I am frozen. Okay. I'm not sure what you that is. Frozen. I can still hear you. <laughs> okay. I, All right. I will stop my cam and start it again. Yeah, good job. 
No, we're still frozen. Still frozen. Well, move hopefully on to Matt like... and we'll see if we can work it out. <laughs> yeah, hopefully it'll kick back in. All right. So, Matt, let's, um, yeah, what, what are you, what's been bubbling? What's been stirring? Oh, well, actually, God spoke to me even this morning, just, you know, as I was randomly in, well, what I thought was random, going through my usual morning time with him um, through the Psalms. So I'll get to that in a minute. But what I, when you first, you know, said last week about, you know, this table of hope and stuff, I thought the first thing, well, the first thing that comes to my mind is like, well, what is hope? Because I feel like there's, I feel like there's two sides to it. There's one where it's like the worldly hope where it's just, you know, wishful thinking or it's, um, oh, my things are falling out already, you know, um, just staying positive and, you know, just wanting, it's a want or it's a desire, that sort of thing. But the difference between worldly hope and biblical hope is that our hope has a substance. Our hope has a foundation. It's it's not just, you know, something that we're wishing for or wanting. It's something that, you know, we know. And Matt, you were touching on this already and I sort of want to go down that track too. So I'm glad you went first. Um, and the difference is that our hope has, like, we have certainty. We have absolute certainty. It's not, oh, you know, I hope things get better. I hope breakthrough happens. I hope God comes through. It's like we have that certainty. And that certainty is, I would say, like, with hope, the foundation is actually trust. And it's yeah. trust in God. It's, you know, what is our trust in? Is it in the wishful thinking? Is it in, oh, if I just stay positive, you know, if I keep saying it and stay positive with a good attitude, it'll change. Or is it in, you know, the substance is the word of God and the trust mm. is the word of God. So what has he said before? What's in his word? What are his promises? What has he already given us ahead of time that he's saying, like, you will need this. You will need, mm. I'm giving this to you now because you will need it later to hold on to and to remind yourself and to you know gather around in places like this and and to remind one another you need we need that foundation of trust of trust in his word trust in his nature trust in his faithfulness all that kind of stuff so then this morning i was already pondering all that and then this morning um i was just in so i started off in psalm 130 actually i'll, I'll do this one first so psalm 130 i'm not going to read the whole thing i'll just read the parts that really um boomed to me um it's only a short it's only a, like eight verse psalm anyway so uh go back and read it uh it says lord i cry out to you of the depths of my despair talk about hopelessness hear mm. my voice O god um jump down to verse five this is why i wait upon you expecting your breakthrough for your word brings me hope mm. i long for you more than any watchman would long for the morning light I will watch and wait for you, O oh God, through the night. O oh Israel, keep hoping, keep trusting, keep waiting on the Lord, for he is tender hearted, kind, and forgiving. He has a thousand ways to set you free. I love that version. I love it. And it just like, you know, in the darkness of the night, we could say, you know, we go through seasons that are the darkness of the night. We could say the world's going through, you know, the darkness of the night right now in the in the darkness where we can't see that, you know, we can't have that glimpse. We can't see the other side. We're stumbling. Everything's there. We've got to have that hope. We have to have to have that that thing that he's given us. He's deposited in us already. And that's so when, you know, when the lights are switched off, when we're in that darkness of the night, it's there and it's to draw upon and we're to remind ourselves where to, you know, keep hoping, keep trusting, keep promising, uh, keep waiting. Um, it's all about, you know, we hate these words, but it's true, patience and <laughs> endurance. And that's, you know, that's what it is. Um, and then I just kept, I know, you know, I love when you read the word and especially when it's the Psalms and I know they're not, you know, they're not, um, written in any order but sometimes you read them and you're like it's so funny that those two are put together in that yeah. order and they just you know all the proverbs or something like that you've got all these individual things that you know randomly holy spirit put together and they just seem to go so well together so then psalm 131 and i'll just jump to the middle it says i am humbled and quieted in your presence like a contented child who rests on its mother's lap I'm your resting child and my soul is content in you. O oh, people of God, your time has come to quietly trust, waiting upon the Lord now and forever. 
And I've just like from times past, like my Bibles are full of like highlights and writing and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So in times past, I've written just, you know, I'm humbled and quieted in your presence. Okay, that's Mm -hmm. like my thoughts are stilled. My worries are silenced when I'm Mm -hmm. in the presence of God. That's my hope. That's what I can base my hope on. And he, he is the source of hope. And he is that, like, mm-hmm. I can, you know, I've got four little children. I know what it's like for them to come into the mother's arms and sit on their lap and all their worries go away because mm-hmm. mum's there or dad's there or, you know, there's that security in the presence of God that just makes everything okay. Even though the circumstances might not be okay, we've got that confidence because we trust our parents. If You know, we've got that mm-hmm. healthy um, whole relationship. There's trust there, and and you know there's faithfulness from the parent figure there. And so when we mm-hmm. run to God, when we sit in His presence and just be with Him, it's like everything's still going on, but our our fears and our worries and our hopelessness and all of that it can fade away. It can just when we're with Him, that just overshadows anything that that could be going wrong around us. Um, I'm your resting child and my soul is content in you. So what is our soul? It's our heart. It's our feelings, our emotions. Okay, again, doesn't matter what's going on around us. Our soul can be content in God, in his presence. And I just feel like that's the, um, you know, the basis of this hope is in a person. Hope is a person. It's like Matt was saying, it's like it's our design right from the start. That's who we were meant to be and I believe hope is a natural overflow of you know when we're really like Lana you're saying about identity and stuff like that when we're really ourselves we have this natural desire to hope to believe for the best to unless we're like you know totally jaded in life (laughs) you know it's just part of human nature because yeah it's deposited in us by God himself so um and then just to quickly to bring this all together and again it's tying up with what you were saying matt like i can't not talk about hope and trust without talking about faith mm-hmm. um and then you know the immediate thing i think of is um hebrews 11 so i'll just quickly read the beginning of it now faith brings our hopes into reality and becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things we long for the things we hope for it is all the evidence required to prove what is still unseen so Again, tying into what you were saying, Matt, like it all goes together. Faith and hope go together. Hope and love go together. Love and faith go it's all It's all there. It's all part of the package. And, you know, we can look around at this year. We can look around at our whatever our personal circumstances are right now, whatever's going on in the world globally, mm. whatever's going on in the church. And we've had a shaking. We've had a huge, huge shaking. And what's left? What are those foundations? What's remaining? What do we, at the end of it, when it's all stripped back, what are we left with? In our heart of hearts, what are we left with? Is it trusting God? Is it hope in Him? Is it, you know, trusting His word, in His promises, in His sovereignty that He will do what He has said He will do? Mm. What is our foundation? And, you know, that is, that's that's how we've got to strengthen ourselves, strengthening ourselves in the Lord by coming together like this, by, like you were saying, Matt, being around people who instill that into us. And, you know, like you were saying at the beginning, Lana, not, you know, not <laughs> watching or listening to other voices, but, you know, making sure we're strengthening ourselves in God and having this yeah. hope that will endure. Yeah. Yeah, that's really good. And I think, um, you know, I I could just say so much, but um, God's really been speaking to me about, you know, waging war with with prophetic words, like what has he spoken? But he's also been highlighting to me um, about his faithfulness. And you just touched on that, Nat. And um, even this morning I was making my coffee and the Lord said to me, look at the mug you're using. And my mug says, great is your faithfulness. And I was like, oh, my gosh, like it was just like, you know, that morning stumble to the coffee machine and just grab the mug out of the the cupboard. And I was like, oh. And so um, I want to just read this. I know we know this really well, but I I really feel like um, the Lord is really wanting to remind us um, right now about around the the whole revelation of his faithfulness Um, in Lamentations 3. 
22, let me see, 22 to 25, it says, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. But then what does um, verse, 20, uh, verse 24 say? It says, The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. <laughs> And so when I look at it, I have a conversation like this around hope and, you know, hey, everybody, come, like, let's invite you to the table of hope. I think of exactly what you guys are sharing and I think of the revelation of the Lord's faithfulness. Like, can we boil it down to, like, absolute, simple kind of foundational truths like the Bible says that God doesn't lie. You know, he's the same yesterday, today and forevermore. And there is no darkness within him. And I, I just, I love Isaiah 55, you know, I think it's verse 11 where the Lord says, you know, I, I've sent forth my word to accomplish that to which I sent it. And so I, I really resonate with what you guys are sharing. Like there is such a place where we have to draw close to the Lord and make a decision of, okay, this is what God is saying. You know, he has spoken this. This is what he's speaking. And I have to be, um, I have to be positioned every day in that place of relationship where I'm receiving uh, what's on his heart. So if I'm in that constant communion with him, then and seeing who he is and seeing his faithfulness, then I am going to be somebody that's full of hope. Because how can you look at him? How can you be in his presence and not be full of hope? You know, like there's just there's such a beautiful place of encounter um, that I feel like the Lord is wanting to bring to us um, in this crazy year of 2020 where, you know, all this stuff's going crazy. Um, but it's it's pushed us as the body of Christ to dig deeper than we've ever dug before. You know, it's forced us to, to truly lift our eyes and say, okay, God, what are you saying? Because there is a new day arising, you know, no matter what, lo what it looks like in the, in the natural, in the earth, the Lord is forging and forming an army that is rising in the earth that are full of hope and they have their eyes locked on the one who never changes and they live by every word that flows out of his mouth. And so um, I just I want to prophesy this over those of you watching this morning, uh, that there is such a, a revelation and manifestation of the faithfulness of God in your life. And I, I heard the words all morning, don't write off 2020. <laughs> like it would be so easy, right? I've seen so many, what are they called? Like memes and different things of like, oh, 2020 has been the worst year on the planet. And like I, I get it, there has been so much trauma and so much pain and so much that so many people have gone through. It certainly hasn't been easy. But I want to say this morning that what we have endured in 2020 does not change the faithfulness of God and it doesn't mm. change the word of God. Mm. I really feel this morning that people need to hear this. The circumstances of 2020 have not changed the word of the Lord over your life. It is really a time to lift up your eyes and say, no, this is what God has said. Even if it looks impossible, this is the time where I'm going to hold to what God has said uh, tighter than I ever have. And if I'm in that place where I'm battle weary and God, I can't even hold it. I'm so tired. Ask the Holy Spirit, God, empower me to be able to hold to your word. Strengthen me, um, you know, refresh me, break off this weariness because the weariness that we're facing as the body of Christ, yes, there's been circumstances in the natural, but there is a demonic assignment sent from the enemy to weary the saints in this hour and to cause the saints to be discouraged and to go, you know what, too hard laying down tools, where this is actually the time where the Lord is saying, I'm building a people that live in a place of hope and their hope is a substance that is found in a person that I'm communing with every day. Mm. Hallelujah. Passing the con. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant, Lana. It's just I, I think... I love the language you put around that. Like, what does that mean for us? And this is where I think the season we're in, uh, if we stick with the concepts of big metaphors and things that have happened many, many years in the past, we lose the concept of what the Father's doing today. Mm -hmm. And what does that actually look like? Because if we can't get to that place, is it just a fairy tale then we're living from? 
like mm-hmm. you know when you were talking the the passage that came to my mind was John 8 where the woman who was caught in the act of adultery if there is ever a more hopeless situation that's recorded in scripture it's got to be that one like mm-hmm. she is vulnerable caught shamed thrown into a situation where they're wow. trying to pin Jesus into a place of hopelessness as well and they're trying to use laws they're trying to use religion uh, to do it uh, and Jesus could completely confounds them by introducing a concept that they did not even see coming. Mm. He just loved on her. And in loving on her, he restored hope to her. And in restoring hope to her, she believed in him. There's the love, hope and faith right there in that very moment. Everything else seems to fade to black, like even the voices of accusation, they disappear. The laws that they try and bring out about stoning her have gone, and she's now just face-to-face with the king of kings. And what's he doing? And he's just loving on her, and he's absolutely pouring into her this just concept of his love and care. And what's happening? Hope has been reborn. She's gone from a place where I am not only ashamed, but this, these people could kill me. So just walking away in forgiveness, freedom, life, health, hope. You can you can only imagine what she started speaking to other people as she left that place because this is no secret moment. People, everyone would have known about it. But here's Jesus and this love just confounds. And like I know in my own life when I was hopeless, like when, like in, Again, I've said this many times with Yolanda, when my marriage went into crisis, hopeless was a powerful word. It was such a powerful word that I didn't know the end of it. But what it took was other people who brought hope into my life. And how did they do that? They just loved on me. They didn't judge me. They didn't condemn me. They didn't walk away from me. They wanted to spend time with me. And again, what happened, it was like that moment in John 8. Hope is reborn. And whatever is born lives and whatever lives can thrive in the. And again, this is the moments that we're living in. We can look at around at a government or a religion or uh, and go, it's all gone pear shaped. But has it? Has it? Has the father gone missing in action? No, he actually lives within us. Like that's John 13. He lives within us. And if he lives within me, then he has equipped me with everything that I'm designed to do to do the things that Christ did. And so instead of bringing condemnation and judgment, I'm actually going to choose to bring love. And in choosing to bring love, hope is born, faith is there. And it's just, I don't know, I get undone by those concepts of bringing it into the real and actually allowing it to be seen. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think that's really powerful. And I think, you know, even right now, um, I was thinking this morning, you know, how, how easy it is when, you know, th- there's such um, battle that, that many have faced in this year and how when you're in that place where you're fighting for your own kind of hope, it, it's easy to become self-focused, right, and to be in this place of, oh, like I'm just trying to get through every day. But I feel like there is this there is this heralding from the heart of the Lord to be intentional, to be that person for other people and to be looking intentionally for how can I support, how can I love, how can I um, release hope to others around me. And, you know, even at the start of this conversation, Matt, you shared about um, Moses with Aaron and her holding up his arms. Like that scripture has been on my heart for the last month. I keep hearing it. I see it. And and I feel like part of this conversation around um, being people of hope are to be ones who link arms with one another you know, to be those people that say, okay, yeah, I've got my own stuff going on and my own battles, but what can I do? How can I How can I position myself in your life to release hope and encouragement and just simply love you? Mm-hmm. And I, I think that's a really important conversation right now. Um, I've had numerous conversations with people and with some leaders uh, in the church over the last little while and a, a certain comment that I keep hearing, um, a common 
thread has been about um, a lot of arguing and a lot of um, bickering that's been happening in the church and a lot of, um, you know, fighting on social media and all of this stuff. And as I'm hearing all of this, um, the, the narrative of, you know, um, the enemy kind of trying to come to bring disunity uh, in the church through, you know, difference of opinion or whatever it is, my heart just breaks because I'm like, this is the hour where God is calling us as the body of Christ to join together as a body and to truly begin to understand what does it mean for me to love my brother? What does it mean for me to love my sister? And I think that it's... Um, I think that we are coming, the pressure of the hour is bringing us back to the foundational truths of Scripture. Like, yes, we're in a new era and God is saying, I'm building a new thing and it's going to be glorious and, and you know, partner with me for the new blueprint. And they're, they're all important things and keys and things that they're part of our assignment for this era. But I also feel this resounding invitation from the Lord um, where he says, you know, what are the two greatest commandments? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and strength and love your neighbour as yourself. And I think that in, in everything that is going on right now, not, not only is God building a people of endurance, people of faith, people of hope, people of maturity, but I really believe God is bringing us back to that place that really reminds us, you know, we will be known by our love. Hmm. You know, I just, yeah. Mm. That's so along the lines of what I was going to say before, Lana, um, known by our love, but like in the theme of hope also, mm. hope and love and faith and all that, that's a beacon of light in a dark world. And yeah. it's, you know, when everything is going great or even when things are just a little bit tough, like hope, if there's that, you know, if hope is a light, it's going to shine bright, the, it's going to get brighter and brighter, brighter the darker the, around it, the darkness mm. around it. You know, the darker the night, the brighter the light that will shine. And so mm. we can look around at the world or we can look around at, you know, the church or it's at our own circumstances and things like that and go, oh, it's so bleak, it's so dark, it's all this. But that's the exact environment where hope shines the brightest and where mm. love shines the brightest and we're called mm. to be that city on the hill. We're called to be, we're not just, you know, to instill that to one another, but to be, to shine to the world because that light points to the only source of hope, the mm -hmm. only source of love that this, that this world has, you know, to offer. And it's, you know, it's all to Jesus. It's all, it's not the light that shines to us. We are the light that, you know, that light shines and points to Jesus. And that light from him comes, like it's from in us and out to show the world that, that lighthouse concept and the city mm. on the hill that is all through scripture. It's, you know, in a way, the darkness is a gift to the hope and the, and the love because it is an opportunity for it to shine brighter. And we are going to be that voice in the world right now that mm. is going to bring hope and is going to bring faith and is going to bring some kind of security in the only mm. person we can have security in in this in, entire life. So mm. it all sort of, you know, comes together and we've just got to look at it with the, with the right mindset and not, you know, sort of tying into what you were saying mm. before as well, Lana. Um, you know, hope has to be, you have to position yourself and it mm. has to be a deliberate thing. It's like we might sit here and go, well, I don't feel hope. Um, it's something you've got to, you've got to conjure that up. You've got to dig down. You've got to, mm. you know, get into your word and you've got to strengthen yourself in the Lord. You've got to do it. Mm. You've got to find it and keep digging until you get there. Like it was saying in, um, I've lost it now in the, you know, Psalm 130, was it? Um, Israel, keep hoping, keep trusting, keep, and keep doing it. You've got to keep doing mm. it, which insinuates that it's going to get weary. It's going to, there's going to be times you're going to, want to give in to hopelessness. It's not going to be easy. No one is saying it is easy. No one has ever mm. said it's going to be easy. In fact, Jesus said the opposite. He said it will be hard. He said there will be trials. He said it will be tough. That's why we need that substance and that's why we need that strong, strong foundation in mm. him, on him to then build upon. Yeah, that's so good. And I think, you know, you and I, Nat, have talked a lot about this for what, the last year at least about intentionality and I think that you know hope 
like being somebody of hope is being somebody that's intentional. It's being someone that is like, I am going to, you know, relentlessly pursue the Lord because I want to be a person of hope. I want to be somebody that um, isn't living on, uh, you know, on the defense all the time. I want to be someone that is living on the offense. I want to be someone who is constantly um, positioned in this place of, of intimacy and this place of the revelation of his nature mm. that I am truly living. And I know everyone's going to go, here goes Lana again with Ephesians <laughs> 2 6. Yes, here we go again. That I'm truly somebody who lives from my seat. Like, mm. I believe to be a person that, um, is, is living in hope, is not only someone that's communing daily with the Lord and in that place of intimacy, but someone that is who recognises that, um, you know, I'm in the world but I'm not of the world and I'm, I'm my seed is actually in heavenly places. So I look at it this way, right? Here we have this crazy world where all of this stuff's going crazy and if I focus on, um, let's get, for example, focus on the media, right? I'm going to be really confused and discouraged and I'm going to be full of despair because there is just not a lot of hope or truth being uh, flooded through those airwaves. And so I look at it as I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. So I'm not on earth looking up, desperately begging God for help. I'm actually seated with Christ. I'm going, okay, Lord, so what? see that thing going on down in the earth? What are you saying? Oh, that's what you're saying? Right, okay. So Lord, I'm decreeing that into the earth. I'm decreeing. I'm not living under my circumstances and I just I feel this really strongly for for some people watching today that you feel like you've been living just under almost what feels like this heaviness like you can't get out from um from under this kind of weight that's been over you and you feel like you've been living as a victim well I really want to encourage you right now that I believe even through this conversation that the Lord is breaking um, discouragement but also awakening you to this reality of hang on so every day I wait at wisdom's doorway like it says in Proverbs right I'm waiting at wisdom's doorway daily to hear the word of the Lord and I, I just I feel strongly that God is I, I just see it like the hand of God is bringing people up out of what feels like quicksand and the Lord is lifting you out of the quicksand and as you're coming out of it it feels like oh, I can breathe again and I want to prophesy that over you right now that you are coming out from under that it, it's a it's an oppression but it's also a, a weariness of heart that has kept you feeling like I'm just being pulled down, suffocated, drowned, and I, I, I am certainly not living above my circumstances. And so I just want to release over you right now just that ferocious focus of faith, that, that refreshment of the Holy Spirit, that every time the Lord speaks, things shift. Every time he speaks, things change. And I prophesy over you that there are encounters with the Lord upon you, even today, where the Lord will speak and suddenly things will break. Suddenly things will shift. And in that place of encounter, I want to encourage you to be intentional. Um, as he speaks, grab hold of it by faith. Lord, thank you, right? Prophecy isn't, you know, just a, an ine inevitability. Catherine uh, Renala says it all the time. It's not an inevitability. It's an invitation. Hmm. It's an invitation that requires a response. And I believe today that as you hear the voice of the Lord, you go, yes, Lord, I'm going to take that today by faith. I just prophesy a deliverance. I see such a deliverance that is going to take place and a fresh breath a second wind. I've been hearing these words, second wind. I had a word for the prophets this week that there's a second wind being released over the prophets. Well, those of you that feel like your breath has been stolen, you feel like you can't breathe properly, I prophesy that second wind of empowerment of the Holy Spirit upon you right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> um, you guys, anything else before we, you feeling anything else before we, we pray? For these beautiful friends well i think if we just if i can just jump in there the concept of what Please. both of you are saying is positioning yourself um, in those beautiful places and the whole concept of this whole talk is at the table hmm. at the table there are no one above you and there's no one below you um, and i know in our society we value platform ministries platforms for people to stand on but at dinner tables there is no platform and at dinner tables, we are one and we see each other. 
and this is again for me in listening to the two of you speak the essence of what we're we're moving towards and to like in the chat you can see people speaking about unity and wanting unity start one person at a time <laughs> okay and again people want huge ministries to affect millions of people it starts with one person at a time and i remember the first time i met you lana um you didn't know who i was i didn't know who you were but look where we are all these years later yeah. And it's the same deal with you, Nat. Uh, it's, again, where do we meet actually physically? We met at the table with Gav Certainly. and with Trish. And, and just to sit there and just to listen to each other's hearts, is that not yeah. hope bringing? Certainly. Is that not loving? Is that not yeah. building the kingdom yeah. of God? And, again, that's the whole essence of prof the prophecies that we're speaking to build, to encourage and to comfort. These are the moments where we have all that is necessary in us already to change the atmospheres one relationship at a time. Mm -hmm. And again, Lana, I love how you brought it all back to love. Mm -hmm. You speak in my language. And <laughs> it's again, it's we make it so complicated at times mm -hmm. when the mm -hmm. Father has made it so simple. It's mm -hmm. like that woman in John 8, so simple. Mm -hmm. He navigated laws and governments and all kinds of things and just said, let's just try love and mm -hmm. what happened life exploded so yeah that's i think this dinner table analogy you know as well as i do like that's part of, it's just so much a part of what i think god's doing in the kingdom right now yeah. but even mm -hmm. when we're locked down we're not really because we're sitting right here at three different tables and just speaking to each yeah. other's hearts it's the most beautiful form of doing life yeah that's so good matt and i was just looking for what i sent you the other day here we go um because Coffee, guys man. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. If anyone ever saw our our chat box Matt on text, they would just they would just scroll through coffee memes <laughs> that we text back and forward. Yeah. Um, oh, um, those of you that um, have been familiar with um, you know Matt's ministry and and a lot of the Facebook lives that Matt and I were doing, you will have heard Matt. Um, heralding this this beautiful message of the tables and so I can't even count how many times um, Matt you have said um, about revival at dinner tables and uh, and so we've had conversations about that for you know how long now gosh I don't even know a year at least and I want to read this to you guys um, Jeremiah Johnson posted this quote this week and as soon as I read it I was like oh wow and I text it straight to Matt because I, I feel like this is really um, part of what God is saying right now uh, for the body of Christ. So he says this, God is looking for churches and ministries to focus on healthy marriage and family like never before. Now get this, living rooms and dining tables will be some of the primary vehicles God uses for his glory in the last days. Like talk about like <laughs> I, I just I have been sitting on that quote like since I saw it because you know Matt you that's what you've been carrying I've just been uh, had such a passion the Lord has really been building within me Nat you're the same about the family unit and and home and table and community and love and I, I feel like this is what God is really encouraging us as the body of Christ yes let's build with God and let's you know take our place in the earth and move in the new assignments and and receive the prophetic solution and all the amazing things that God is going to do to bring in this amazing harvest. But I truly believe that some of the most profound moments are going to be um, at, the, at the table, at the, the living room, the dining room tables. Yes. Like God is going to do such an incredible move of his spirit and his glory um, at dinner tables and living room tables like we've never seen before. And I want to prophesy this over those of you because I, I had this pain, like this ache in my heart uh, since I got on this broadcast this morning. If there's any of you that are on here today and, um, and you look at your family unit right now and you go, you know what, Lana, there is so much brokenness in my, my family unit right now, in my relationships. And I have been praying and crying out to the Lord and I'm not seeing anything shift. 
I want to encourage you and prophesy over you restoration. I kept feeling this word of restoration of relationship in the family unit that even before this year ends, I see that there has been some real brokenness that has taken place, especially this year for a lot of families where the heart of the Lord was to draw the family closer and to strengthen that bond of unity. But the enemies come in to steal, kill and destroy. Well, I want to speak to you right now that there is um, there is hope because I see a restoration and a, a, what do I say? It's a resurrection and restoration uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit that is invading your home. That when you when you thought, you know, God, I don't know how this is going to come together, that suddenly God is going to, to move in such power. There is going to be such a restoration of relationship. And I see prodigals that are going to come home. So I want to encourage those of you watching, if that's you, don't lay down tools. Don't stop praying. Don't stop believing because your prayers have reached uh, the ears of and the heart of the Lord. And there is a restoration that God is bringing into your home in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, guys, if you don't have anything else kind of bubbling on your hearts, I think maybe we can pray for everybody and uh, and bless these wonderful people. <laughs> Love to. That sounds good. Cool. All right, Matt, do you want to start and that and then that and I'll, I'll close? Sure. <laughs> Okay, let's pray together. And again, when we pray, don't check out and wait for me to finish. Allow the Spirit of the Lord to minister to you where you're at. When Lana asked firstly to pray, I just uh, earlier in this um, this feed, I just had this picture of um, just a lot of ground, and I saw lots of new flowers coming up through the ground. And again. I can see like people coming to life and it's like at times you guys have been wondering whether you've been in the, the good soil or hard ground and sometimes you look at your circumstances and you go, it must, mustn't be the good soil, it must be the hard ground. I just want to lift that off you because mm -hmm. the time of darkness is now uh, quickly fleeing as the light of Christ is now coming upon the very seeds that you have planted. There is new life that is here and there's new life that is flourishing around you. One of the joys of watching a chat bar in a session like this is to see how you, each of you is interacting with another and to see the love and the hope and the unity and the encouragement that flows. This is the body of Christ. This is how we were made to be. And so in this moment, I just want to invite you to imagine the field of the king. This is Jesus' farm. This is Jesus' land. He has sown deeply. He has readied the ground. And each seed he has known by name. And even though that you've felt darkness or felt hopelessness, again, this is not a language that he engages with because he brings the hope. He is the hope. He is the light. And he has chosen to share that with us. In John 8, he says, if you follow me, my light will be in you. And so today, Jesus... Would you just illuminate our imaginations to see the light in each of us and to see when that light comes on, that will affect the people around us. So Jesus, in that place of imagination, and allow us to, to see the image of Christ, see you, and then allow it to shine on the people that today, this very day, that we can reach out to and just pour hope on. Mm -hmm. Father, I just thank you that Christ is the hope to this world and that we carry that hope within us. And so today, would you breathe across your people and release us, Father, with the power of hope to love and to bring all of the kingdom into the lives that are listening to this feed right now. Father, I just thank you for Lana and for Nat and just want to pray a blessing over both their homes and their hearts. Thank you, Jesus, for their faithfulness and thank you for the hope they both carry and they so willingly share. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. God, we just want to position ourselves in a place of hope. Mm -hmm. Lord, if we haven't been there, that's okay. We repent of that. We repent of hopelessness. We repent of believing lies, of letting the lies and the untruths take over our minds and our hearts and our souls, Lord. We repent of that and we come back to you now mm -hmm. in that place of intimacy, God. We, we just climb up on your lap like a father and we are that resting child. 
Mm. We rest in your peace. We rest in your presence. We rest in the hope that you are, God. We rest in mm. your love. We let all those thoughts be silenced. We let the anxieties wash away. We let the worries just flow away from us now as mm. we're in your presence, Lord. And nothing else matters when we're with you. Nothing else matters, Lord. Whatever is going on in our own personal lives, whatever's going on in this world, whatever is going on in society and around us, Lord, mm. we just come and be with you and we strengthen ourselves in you. And Lord, every time we feel this hopelessness or this discouragement arise, every time we start to doubt your word or your will coming to pass, God, we just come back to this place. We deliberately position ourselves in this place. We come back to be with you in the quiet with you, Lord, in your presence, in this intimacy, Lord. And we choose hope. We choose your word. We choose your promises, Lord. We choose to meditate upon that and to fill our hearts and our minds with what you have said, Lord. We thank you, God, that we can have hope. We thank you that you are the hope of the world and we thank mm -hmm. you that we have you and that we can bring you to the table to those around us. We can bring your hope to the table mm -hmm. to every encounter we have with anyone else, to every dinner we have, to every um, relationship we have, God. We can bring mm -hmm. your hope to the table, mm -hmm. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, we thank you. Oh, for who you are. Mm. God, we thank you that you never change. Lord, we thank you for your goodness, your kindness and your love. Mm. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. Yes. And God, this morning as we, we come here and we sit at the table of hope, Lord God, to, to hear what your spirit is saying. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would continue to refresh the hearts of mm. each one that is watching. Lord, whether live or on the replay, Lord, Holy Spirit, I pray that you would just pour over them, Lord, like a waterfall. Yes. Lord, that it would wash away all weariness, God, all discouragement. Lord, I just I see uh, so many that have been um, standing and believing you, Lord God, but their hearts are just are so are hurting, Lord, because they've been waiting so long, Lord, for the manifestation of your promises, God. And, Lord, I pray that, Lord, where there is that pain, Lord, that right now, Holy Spirit, that the revelation of your faithfulness, Lord, the revelation of your love would just pour into those parts of their hearts, Lord God, and bring healing. And, Lord, I thank you that the tears of sadness, Lord, the tears that have come in the waiting, the tears of pain in the waiting and the disappointment, Lord, I thank you that you are turning them to tears of thankfulness and joy. Lord, I thank you for the manifestation of your faithfulness in their lives, Lord God. Lord, I thank you for what uh, you are doing. And, Lord, I pray that as they continue, Lord, to feast on your faithfulness, Lord, as they continue to look back at their history with you, God, and intentionally praise you and thank you for every way that you have come through, where you have delivered them and healed them and set them free. Lord, I thank you that as they feast on your faithfulness, God, that hope will continue, Lord, to just burst in their hearts. Mm -hmm. Lord, that, that they would return, Lord God, to being prisoners of hope, yes. Lord, that they would be ones that would be mm. so captured, so captured by the hope, the hope of the Lord because of who you are. So, God, today I pray that there would be deeper encounters with mm. you, Jesus. We can so easily say, oh, yes, like I've, I want an encounter with the Lord, but, God, I pray that there would be such deep encounters with you that would mark them, Lord God, mm and that would bring them into this greater uh, place of intimacy and depth of revelation of your love and your goodness and your kindness. So we bless you today, Lord. We thank you for everything that you have done in this year. Lord God, this year isn't even over yet, but we thank you, God, that even where there has been darkness, Lord, you have been moving. Lord, you have been moving what the enemy meant for harm. Lord God, you are turning for good. So we thank you for everything that you have done this year. We thank you for everything that you're doing and we thank you for everything that you're going to do. 
and we wait in expectant hope, Lord, to see the salvation, the deliverance of the Lord Mm. manifest, Lord, in the nations and the justice of God in Jesus' Mm. mighty name. Amen. Mm. Amen. (laughs) Hallelujah. Um, I just want to say this, guys, like when I was praying, I really felt strongly, um, you know, part of this conversation on hope um, is is so important. But one thing I really feel like, and it's around that word of intentionality, is go back and feast on your history with God. Mm-hmm. What has God done for you? Like be intentional, grab a notepad and write down, you know, in 1993, God did this for me. You know, last week, God did this. Write a list of what God has done, the ways that you have seen him move. If you've got testimonies on your phone, wherever, reread them, go back through your journals, because I feel like there are actually encounters with the heart of God and his faithfulness that he wants to release uh, to you as you meditate and feast upon what he has done because he's faithful and so to be people of hope i think we have to be people that are in the word people that love one another um but also people that recognize um that that he is he's just he's good and we feast on that place of testimony so that's a a little bit can i call it homework that's a little bit of homework (laughs) (laughs) to uh, take away from today so Matt and Nat, thank you so much. What a joy, guys. I could sit with you all day and just do this. (laughs) Back at you both. (laughs) (laughs) It's been so fun. Oh, and look, we can all have a coffee together (laughs) across the across the (laughs) airwaves. See, we're all we're all we're all here. (laughs) Oh. Um, in 60 seconds, guys, I know most people watching are like, yep, familiar with Nat and Matt, know them really well, love them. If there's anyone joining us, we are streaming on YouTube as well um, that may be um, new to you guys. This is the first time they've, um, they've heard you minister. How can they follow along with you? Me first. Don't all jump in at once. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, yep, I pastor Haberfield Baptist Church, and someone can drop that in the feed that's uh, a friend of mine. That would be good. I, I run a, a thing called Prophetic Mentoring, which helps people hear and to discern the voice of God and just to walk with them as well. And, again, if you want to get in contact with me, it's through an email address there that I'll get someone to drop in the chat bar. Oh, oh there, there it go. is. There's, Thank you, there's Kev. all the details. How good is Kev? <laughs> Kev is just yeah. amazing. Yep, but that's how you can contact me. Awesome. And Excellent. Natalie. You can follow along at nataliefuller.co, um, which is also my Instagram as well. And I'm on Facebook somehow. I don't know. <laughs> my <laughs> Facebook is like, I am so confused by Facebook. So, yes, <laughs> Natalie Fuller, one of the Natalie Fullers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there you go. Well, guys, um, I actually worked out because Facebook have like, I know they've done changes in the last week or so. And so I've had so much trouble working out my pages and how to find things since they've updated it. And so when I went to tag you, Nat, I typed in Natalie Fuller Co, like C-O, and it oh, came up okay. with your page. Excellent. Yep. So guys, if you want to follow along with Nat and find the right page, just type in Natalie Fuller and then C-O and it will come up Excellent. and you can just follow along that way. So thank you. Yay. <laughs> no worries. Well, guys, we bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we just, we love you. We pray that you've really been encouraged by all that the Lord has done in this broadcast. I encourage you, you know, go back and watch it um, and uh, and really allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you. But it's been a joy to be with you guys and uh, and we will see you again soon. Okay, bless you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.